If you want to learn how to dual thread your AMD GPUs running SMOS and the XMR Stack Miner, and you don't really know where to start, you've landed on the right channel. We're going to go step by step, and we're starting right now. Welcome to the Savage Mind YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to cover how to dual thread AMD GPUs using the Simple Mining Operating System, or SMOS, and the XMR Stack Miner. This, doing this procedure will get you about 25% more hash power. So if you're running an 11 card rig like I am, AMD GPUs, I got some 570s and 580s in there, mostly 580s. Um, if you're running that type of system, I was getting 7,500 hashes per second on Kryptonite. Uh, prior to uh, doing this, you doing this, uh, what would you call it? I don't know. So before doing this reconfiguration or added configuration, I was getting 7,500 hashes before the config or the configuration modification. And I was getting 10,000 hashes after. So 10K on Kryptonite Heavy. And that's enough talking. Let's just go ahead and get to it. I have to say it is super hot in here. I left, I left the miner on, so... Or the miner is on. So it's like burning up in here. It's probably kind of loud too, but sorry about that. The prereqs for this video are to have a working Simple Mining OS website account. And you're also going to need an AMD GPU system where you are mining or want to mine a Kryptonite or Kryptonote algorithm and dual thread your AMD GPU. Those are the prereqs for this video. The first thing you'll want to do is set up a little bit of documentation just to keep track of the things that you're going to need and use frequently throughout this process. So I'm going to create a folder here called how we'll just say dual threading, dual thread AMD GPUs. Crypto note. And then we'll go in here, create a file, text document, dual thread AMD GPUs. Info. All right. In here, we'll just document what we're gonna need. We're gonna need to know what miner we're using. In this case, it's gonna be XMR stack, but we'll, we'll paste in the actual name of the uh, miner. We'll go with the current hash rate so we can compare after our before and after dual threading. Current OC settings. And then we'll say after dual thread hash rate. Now I have an 11, I'm going to be using an 11 GPU rig here. So I have um, nine RX 580s. They're the MSI Armor Mark IIs. And I have two RX 570s, and those are also the MSI Armor Mark IIs. Um, let's see, what else do we need? There's a reason I'm putting this, these numbers in here so that we know how many GPUs we're dealing with, because it's important whenever we uh, go through this process. You'll also need a computer with internet access and one that you can perform these steps from. In my uh, example here, I'm using just a Windows 10 machine so you have to have those two things as well. The first thing that you'll want to do, well, the next thing that you'll want to do is identify the actual miner that you're going to use. So we'll go to Simple Mining OS, simplemining.net, go to Rig Groups, add a group, and in this case we're going to be using XMR Stack. And what I like to do is just copy this you have to click on it first and then copy this, uh, the name, the actual name of the, the miner. 
official name, I guess you could say. Let's go ahead and throw this into our documentation here. I want to go ahead and get the utility that we're going to use for this process because I want to show you what things look like before you even start. So the utility that we're going to use is called FileZilla. So we'll Google that. It's uh, FileZilla-project.org. And what I like to do here is click on, you know, obviously the one that you need. But here, if you download this one, it actually comes bundled with a bunch of other software and it asks you a bunch of questions like, do you want to install it? So what I like to do is come down here to show additional download options and just go ahead and grab the one that says Win64 if you're on Windows 10, you know, you'll, you'll choose this one, win64.zip, not the one that says setup, but just the one that says zip. And then that one, click on that. This one should be the clean one. So we'll uh, go look at that. Right click on it, choose extract. Just for this purpose, we'll just extract it here. Now we'll go into the folder now. Should be an executable in here. FileZilla with the nice icon here. Now we're just gonna double click on it to run it. FileZilla is just a fairly simple, secure file transfer protocol, SFTP client, that you use to, uh, to access your rig across the network and you can access the file system of a Linux operating system like what Simple Mining operating system is. The first thing that you're going to need is the host IP address. So in this case, we'll choose the, we'll put our mouse over the rig name that we're trying to access. And right here you can see my LAN IP, the IP address of the on the local network, not the public IP, but the local LAN IP is 192.168.1.109. So we just have to remember that. We're gonna put that in here, 192.168.1.109. The username is going to be, we're gonna use root. And you'll need to know your password. Can't help you with that. And then the port 22 is the default. Oh, you know what? I messed that up. No, I see. You can't use, for usernames in Linux, you can't use uh, capital letters. All right, so now what we're looking at on the right hand side here is our rig file system. Our, our, um, Simple Mining OS Ubuntu 16.04 file system. And if you go into Miner Org, this is where your miners are, the ones that you've ran and you've actually mined with before, or at least launched and assigned. A, these are the miners that you have assigned to a rig and then rebooted the rig or reloaded the miner, typically reboot. So you can see that we don't have an XMR stack miner loaded right now. And that's why I wanted to go ahead and do this utility, go ahead and install it and show you this so that you can see that it's not in here. So now we'll just minimize this and we have to get, we have to assign the XMR stack miner to our rig. So we go to, we put a check mark next to the one that we want to assign the miner to, go to assign group, 
I already have everything, all this set up for an XMR stack um, miner to be used. And then we're gonna choose reboot. And this is actually gonna disconnect us from FileZilla. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and close this. And then we're gonna reboot. I'm just gonna leave all the overclocking settings in here that I'm using for ETH and, um, and let it rock. You can see it's downloading the miner. You won't be able to see that on the actual uh, miner console on the dashboard for simple mining, but if you have a monitor plugged up to the actual rig, you can see it. So we're starting to see some results accepted by the pool. That's a good sign. You'll note here there's zero through 10. Remember I was saying I have 11 GPUs on this rig. So that's zero through 11, or I'm sorry, zero through 10. And I'm getting 7,500 hashes per second on kryptonite heavy. So we'll close that. Now we need to go back into FileZilla. Let's connect back to our rig. And then we're gonna go into the minor folder. And the XMR stack minor. And this is the only place that the AMD text file will be at this point. If you go back up here to root and go into minor org, you can see, you know, here's the folder, but if you go into that for the minor, it's not, it doesn't have an amd.txt file in there. So 
we have to get the one from here that's already generated. So what we'll do is on the left, go ahead and go browse to a location, a good location for the file. We'll just go into the folder that we created for this process here. We're gonna click on amd.txt, right click, download, and it's gonna put it over here. So now it's on your local machine. So now if you right click on it and choose edit, because what we're trying to do here, we have to edit the amd.txt file to add lines for additional GPUs so that we can dual thread. Um, but if you right click on it here and choose edit, it kind of looks like garbage, right? It's, I mean, this is gonna be hard to edit in my opinion. So what you can do is just go out to your regular file system, Windows or uh, File Explorer, go to the location where the file is. And in this case, it's on our desktop in a folder called Dual Thread AMD GPUs CryptoNote. And then we're gonna right click on it and choose Open With WordPad. Now, this is a little bit cleaner and easier to edit. What we need to do is we need to double the number of lines, the double the number of total entries. So you see how it goes zero. If you look at the index right here, it goes zero through 10. Because remember I was saying I have 11 GPUs. So it set up one line or one section here for each GPU. But what you can do to dual thread it is you can double up on these on the number of lines. So it all begins right here with index zero. So if you grab, if you copy this all the way down to the end to where it says right before this these, these two characters right here. So this is basically the end. And if you right click and choose copy, give yourself a little bit of room here, put a couple of spaces in there. And then you're gonna right click, paste. And then what you should end up with, if you kind of look at how things are lined up, you basically have a duplicate of each line all the way through. You'll have 20, in my case, because I have 11 GPUs, there should be 22 different lines, two of which are gonna have the same index. So if you just look down through here, you got zero through 10 right here, and then it starts again. I see we might have a problem right here. Maybe not. I don't know if that would do anything or not, but just make it look like all the other ones. So you got zero through 10, and then you have zero here through So that's 22 separate lines, right? You just kind of, kind of, you just eyeball it and make sure it looks right, you know, as far as the format and everything and the spacing and all that stuff. And then you're going to save that file. Choose yes to the warning about saving it as a TXT file. Now what we're going to do, this is the same location. Okay, so, well, that's kind of cool. I didn't know it did that. It looks fi like FileZilla kind of monitors this and says, hey, you know, it looks like it changed. Do you want to upload it? Sure. Let's do it. So now the only thing is, it only put it in the var temp minor XMR stack folder. We need to get it into the root folder 
the my the actual minor org folder see because if you go in here it's still not there right so this change that you made uploading it to here is not going to have any effect because this is the one that will be loaded whenever the server reboots or whenever the rig reboots so what we want to do is we want to copy this file amd.txt to this folder this is the the main root folder the root minor org folder so let's click and drag that over here and now you have your amd.txt file here i wonder what it looks like whenever you view it okay good it kind of straightened it up so there might be an easier way of doing that i don't know this seemed to work out pretty well it looks good to me so we'll just get out of here no need to re-upload it because we just saw it I mean you can view edit it again this is where it start this filezilla kind of gets a little bit confusing a little bit here um, but we we are pretty sure that we modified that file, right? So let's go in here and look. We're gonna discard the local file and then we're gonna download and edit the file anew. So as long as we've got our 22 lines in here, two sets of zero through 10, we're good. So now we're going to try to exit. It's gonna tell us that some files are still being modified or edited. So we're gonna choose no. Go to file, show files currently being edited. We're gonna unedit these, this is just what I learned that it's just easier to do. And then we get out of there. Now let's double check. I'm gonna go back into FileZilla. Just because I'm kind of a, a noob at this particular program. Let's go ahead and reconnect again. Have my password wrong, I guess. And then we're gonna go right to the minor org folder. Go down to the XMR stack minor. Right click on the amd.txt file. View edit. And just double check and make sure that all your lines are there. Two sets of zero through 10, and they are. All right, great. Get out of there. Close this. Now we saw that they're there, so we just choose yes for that. We wanna go ahead and close it. And then we're gonna make a note of this particular hash rate right here. Let's go and open up our documentation file. I don't know if this is in there or not. Yeah, so we'll just put it in there like this. And then we're going to reboot this miner or reboot the rig. While the rig's rebooting, I can tell you one thing. The r running a kryptonite or kryptonote algorithms on your rigs, you can see, I mean, the temperatures are super low. Fan speed is low. The, I don't know about the power draw. I know it's less. I, I haven't really checked it, to be honest, um, to see exactly what it is but it just it's so much quieter <laughs> you know and the the room is cooler you can clearly see that it uses a lot less electricity
And you can see right here, it goes zero through 10. And what you should see after it reboots is you should see zero through 21, I believe. And this right here is your hash rates per card, per GPU. Okay, so we're getting an error that says file is empty or too short, amd.txt. So let's get back into FileZilla. If I can ever type in my password correctly. We'll go right to, this is the running miner. We'll see what it looks like here. Okay, it's empty. So that's not good. So I wonder if maybe just a second reboot will get that in there the right way. Let's go back up to root, miner org. XMR stack, view edit. Oh, it is definitely empty. Okay, so, hmm, don't know what happened there. I'm probably doing something wrong. You can clearly see over here that there's, there's data there. Maybe whenever it exited and it needed to upload the file, or it told me like, hey, you got something open. Let's just try to click and drag it over here. It's going to ask you, do you want to overwrite? We're just going to say yes. View edit. Discard local file, then download and edit file new. And we kind of did this last time. I wonder if this is going to work. So now let's go to f like the there must be some way of like committing the change, I guess, maybe is what I'm looking at. It says it's being edited. So maybe let's unedit that one. Unedit that one. Still looks good.
See like every time you right click and edit, it like holds the file open like it's being edited even though you closed it. So it looks like if you click, click on the file that you're editing, let me get back out of here. If you go to file, show files currently being edited, click on the file and say upload and unedit. And then okay, maybe it'll close then. Yeah, see? All right, so let's go back through the process real quick. Go ahead and reconnect. All right, and then we go to minor org. Scroll down to XMR stack, right click on AMD TXT, choose view edit, double check our lines, make sure we got two sets of zero through 10, in my case. If you have uh, 12 GPUs, it's gonna be zero through 11. Get out of there. If we try to close it, it's gonna say that the files are open, no. Now we're gonna say file, show files being edited, click on this, upload and unedit, okay. And then we should be able to get out of it. All right, so now let's try to restart, reboot our rig here. And what I've noticed about this particular miner, um, the XMR stack, this version, if you have something wrong, it'll say, please download newest Simple Mining OS image in order to use this miner. But it, if you have everything right, it might actually say that and it'll still work. So it's kind of weird, but I just let it go. I kind of ignore that on this particular miner. Like if you have an overclock wrong, it, it'll throw it up there or overclock too much. It'll throw that same message up there. Maybe I do need to download a newer, the newer, if there is one, I don't even know if there is one. Yeah, I don't really like to edit out the troubleshooting steps and the problems that you run across. Because it can be a little bit misleading whenever you make everything look so slick and there's no problems. I mean, it's nice to do that for simplicity and just making it look like perfect. But I think there's some value in showing you that it doesn't always work exactly the way it should. Sometimes you run into problems, you know, and it's more times than not that you run into a problem. So it's, I think, I think there's a lot of value in showing this particular part of it where, you know, you're not just running through the scenario perfectly with zero uh, problems and, you know, and it's really low effort and everything just works perfectly because in the real world, that's not usually the way it works. So we have new blocks de detected and accepted, our results accepted, so that's a good thing. And you can see here where it's uh, zero through 21 GPUs. And then, like I said, the hash rates are gonna be a little bit lower, but you're dual threading, so it's gonna be higher with two. 
you know, doubled. So before we were getting 7,500 hashes per second. Now we're getting almost 10,000. And as time goes on, this will creep up on you. It'll be, it'll probably end up somewhere around 10,700 with my current settings here. So you can clearly see how dual threading AMD GPUs on Kryptonite algorithms, Kryptonote algorithms, is very beneficial. We started out at 7,500 hashes per second and we're at 10,000 now. So after dual threading. If you found this video useful and helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything in the future. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. And for my Macedonian family and friends, I died a chow. And I got to give a special thanks to Randy Grohlman. He's a developer friend of mine. Um, and he's got some really cool stuff going on. He does this uh, Profit, Profit Bot Pro uh, Miner. It's like really advanced and it looks at like all the profitability of every shit coin out there. <laughs> and um, anyway, he, does, he, he focuses mainly on Kryptonite, uh, Kryptonote algorithms so um, be sure to check him out I'll leave all that information in the description uh, he's he's a whiz at this stuff he really helped me out um, with setting up this amd.txt file that we're going to talk about in this video so be sure to check him out